Resolved, on balance, public subsidies for professional athletic organizations in the United States benefit their local communities. Observation. One cannot answer the question, is it worth it, exclusively by focusing on economic data. In order for the opposition to take the ballot, they would have to prove both economic and communal disadvantages. Contention 1, social development. Subpoint A, social anchors. Stadiums can be seen as social anchors, bringing people together in a way unseen before. A study by Clopton and Finch in 2011 explains how social anchors, which are places that can be used as a social hub, promote relationships that can help community members through challenging times and enforce the ties of similar-minded people. Subpoint B, civic pride. According to Crompton in 2004, uh, sports teams provide a tangible focus for building community consciousness and social bonding. They are an important part of the collective experience of urban dwellers since they tie them together regardless of race, gender, or economic standing. They are one of the few vehicles available for developing a sense of community. Macri of the International Student Journal writes, Sports define the morals and ethics attributed not only to the athletes, but to the totality of society as a whole. Fans find a reaffirmation of key societal values through sports as they give meaning to their own lives. Spectators engage in certain kinds of pleasures, fulfilling their own desires. We can see how these stadiums can be looked at and seen as a place of belonging. They allow for social engagement. Contention 2, growth. Stadiums have shown to cause economic and community growth. Minneapolis, San Diego, and Detroit prove Target Field has been a success story so far. The field has generated $4 million a year in tax revenue for Minneapolis, and in two years following the opening of Target Field, existing businesses reported a major spike in revenue following the stadium's opening. Detroit City agreed to transform what was once a blighted, crime-ridden near, strip near downtown Detroit into a $650 million entertainment venue that will include a new arena for the Detroit Red Wings. The transfer is expected to revitalize a commercial dead zone with a $450 million hockey arena uh, anchoring spin-off development. Olympia Development has projected it will create 5,550 jobs and sustain 1,100 permanent jobs, which is 440 more jobs than at the current Red Wings home. At least 30% of the construction companies hired must be either based or headquartered in Detroit, and that at least 51% of the workforce will be the Detroit residents. Contention 3, Public Service. Thomas Jefferson once said, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructed, of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form, as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Jefferson defined government as an institution responsible for pro providing its citizens with the opportunity for the pursuit of happiness. Most power lays at the hands of the people, and if people are content with the unity and pride of sports, then according to Thomas Jefferson, the government is responsible for providing that opportunity for happiness to its people. However, stadiums should be not thought of as a business, but instead like a public service. Just like when the government subsidizes a public library, the reason is not economic gain, but a service to the citizens. Thank you, and I urge you a pro ballot. We negate resolved on balance public subsidies for professional athletic organizations in the United States benefit their local communities. Contention 1, economic detriment. Subpoint 8, lack of benefits. The money they give to professional athletic organizations can be used for many more beneficial things for the community. Stadiums, if they last, are only pleasing to a portion of the community since not everyone is interested in sports. And to those people, it is a complete loss of revenue and wasted money on something that could have helped the area. Judith Long, a professor of urban planning at the Harvard University Graduate School of Design, calculated that economists have been underestimating public subsidies for sports facilities by 25%. Robert Bade, an econo economics professor, states in no instance did a positive significant correlation surface among stadiums, professional sports, and city income as a fraction of regional income. Michael Jensen, an American economist, states it creates less lost tax revenue, revenues that under normal, normal circumstances would be assessed and paid for. Robert Treese, a vice president and economist in the research department at the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, states, Many public subsidies do little to promote economic equity, and rather than correcting for market failure, they induce distortions in economic decisions and behavior. Such programs may justifiably be scaled back or terminated when they come under increased scrutiny. Subpoint B, exaggerated benefits. If you want to inject money in the local economy, it would be better to drop it from a helicopter than invest it in a new ballpark. Alan Sanderson, econom econ 
economist for the University of Chicago, believes, as we do, that funding facilities for private athletic organizations is a massive waste of public money and for good reason. According to Hamlin University business professor David Schultz, numerous studies on the issue have demonstrated that advocates of public subsidies, especially in regards to stadiums, constantly exaggerate the so-called benefits. In fact, according to Brookings, a new sports facility has an extremely small, perhaps even negative effect on overall economic activity and employment. No recent facility appears to have earned anything approaching a reasonable return on investment. Contention 2, eminent domain and gentrification. The money that is granted only goes towards the stadium and the limited area around the stadium instead of the surrounding community's economy. It's not fair that the public has to be paying for a majority of these stadiums. Furthermore, stadiums are predominantly built in areas where low-income families live, and this often leads to eminent domain, where the government seizes land for public use. It increases property values, which causes an increase in house taxes. And because of this, most of the low-income families living there cannot afford the rent any longer, and it results in gentrification. These people cannot find another home for a good price, and therefore are relocated to somewhere extremely far from the original neighborhoods and communities. Contention 3, less infrastructure spending. According to the San Francisco Gate 2014, Detroit officials announced their plan to slash public workers' pensions benefits, and on the same day, the billionaire owners of the Detroit Red Wings unveiled details of an approved taxpayer finance stadium for the professional hockey team. Detroit retirees now face massive cuts to their previously agreed retirement funds. At the same time, $283 million is going towards the new stadium. The budget problems in Michigan are part of a general tr trend across the country. In Chicago, for example, Mayor Emanuel recently passed a $55 million cut to munis municipal pensions. However, also promoted a plan to spend $55 million on a stadium development plan. In Miami, Bloomberg News reports that the city approved a $19 million subsidy for a professional ba basketball arena and then began considering a plan to cut as many as 700 librarian positions, including a fifth of the library staff and more than 300 police. According to local police affiliate Rivera, you won't enjoy the safety and security you deserve, but you can certainly enjoy Dolphins game. And it is for these reasons that we negate the resolution. Can you repeat what you said about uh, public service? Public service. Okay, so basically we're saying that you should consider the sports stadiums as a public service because um, it's basically the government's job to make the people happy, and the people are happy with the stadiums. That's that's why it should be considered a public service. For the people who don't like sports, how is that happy? Okay, you have to realize that the people who do enjoy sports and people who do like hanging out with their friends at a football game or anything, that the majority outweighs the people who don't like the sports. Okay. Um, may I ask you a question? Yes. Okay, you talked about gentrification. Do you have any examples about people who, or any examples of where gentrification has occurred? Yes, my partner will address eminent domain and gentrification. Okay, do you have a question for me? Um, can you repeat what you said about the permanent jobs created in your second contingent? Oh, we said that um, in Detroit that um, 1,100 permanent jobs would be created, like in the stadium. Okay. Um, you said that they're exaggerated benefits. How are the benefits exaggerated? Um, we have a quote from uh, business professor David Schultz, and it said, numerous studies on the if issue have demonstrated that advocates of public subsidies, especially in regards to stadiums, can constantly exaggerate the so-called benefits. Okay, so when we say that people are happy going to a football game and the millions that it brings into the city, you think that those are exaggerated benefits? Um, my partner will address that in her speech. Okay, but can you address it? Because I just asked you the question. Um, can you repeat it? Okay. Um, you think that the millions that the um, stadium brings in and the happiness of the people who go to the stadiums, you think that's an exaggerated benefit or benefits? There are happy people that go to it, but there are also people who are unhappy there. Okay, but you, you have to remember that the majority outweighs the people who are unhappy. Okay. Um, do you have any questions for me? Uh, can you repeat what you said about Target Field? Okay, so we said how Target Field, it's basically been like a success story so far because it brings in $4 million a year. And in the first two years, um, whenever it opened, the businesses have reported a major spike in business. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so you said that we should basically use this money somewhere else. Is that true? Yes. Okay, well, doesn't the resolution, based on the wording of the resolution, can't you agree that the money is already allocated to the pub, the professional sports organizations, so we can't debate about the funding of education or fire We're departments or anything better like that. not to be publicly subsidized. Okay. Um, any questions for me? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, that's all the questions I have. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. To start off, I'll be basically going over their case, and then I will extend on my own. So to start off on the first contention, basically there are economic 
benefits or well, economic disadvantages. The so point A talked about how uh, the money could be used somewhere else. And as my partner stated, based on the wording of the resolution, we can agree that the uh, that the pub public subsidies have already been allocated to the uh, professional uh, so, uh, professional sports teams. So we should be here debating the benefits and disadvantages, not hypotheticals, not whether if the money should be spent on somewhere else and what would it do then. No, the resolution clearly asks for benefits and disadvantages towards the local community. And if you don't buy that point, well, and also on a sub point of their sub point, they talk about how people should not be paying for something that they don't use. However, my, we live in a democracy, meaning the majority rules. And the price of democracy is that, that even the minority has to pay for what the majority wants. That's what democracy is about. And if the, most people want it, then it is an overall benefit benefits towards the community. Uh, talking about benefits, on their sole point B, they talk about exaggerated benefits and how it's a waste of public money. But as my partner asked, is really happiness and the income, is that really an exaggerated benefit? Because at, at the end of the day, it's not. It's actually helping the people. It's actually making the people happy. And it's actually, act, it's overall helping the community. Uh, under second contention, they talk about gentrification and eminent domain. Uh, by them saying eminent domain as is, that means that the government, eminent domain is a completely legal uh, procedure, meaning that the people are actually getting paid exactly what they deserve. They're getting paid exactly what they should, meaning that there's no real abuse or towards the local community. The people are getting exactly what they need to get. Um, also, low-income families uh, have to move. Again, the, the government pays them the right share that you know that the property is worth and with that money they can go on and uh, keep they can well, keep on okay on the dirt contention they talk about um there's going to be less infrastructure and spending but as i stated there's spin-off development after um the stadiums are built as i stated in the target field example after the stadiums were built in the first two years there was an increase an amazing increase in the in spite of the raven a spike of the local businesses around the stadium so Sure, that same money that's not going to be in the stadiums, obviously that money's not going to be for infrastructure, but at the same time, that stadium is going to influence more infrastructure around that uh, area. Now, onto our uh, own contentions. Uh, on our social development, we talk about how it, uh, civic pride and social anchors are actually a tangible kind of benefit because you can actually see the communities being built. You can actually count the communities coming together. You can see... Um, the community is coming together. And as I stated, they're, on, they're one of the only few vehicles available to build a community. So if anything, we are helping the community by creating the community. Um, on our second contention, we talk about growth and we talk about how Target Field and Detroit prove. There is actually empirical evidence that there is economical advantages and at, at no point are these, are these benefits exaggerated in any way. And lastly, our third contention, which is the voters of today's round. The opposition does not understand what public subsidies are. Public subsidies are not a way to make a profit, make a revenue. That's not what they're for. They're there to help the people, to help the local communities. And at the end of the day, you're not looking for profit. You're not looking to get something back. If anything, you're looking to help the people, the citizens, the local community. And that's why the protest is valid in today's debate run, because we actually allocate for that. We actually say that the public should, you know, we're actually focusing on the public. We're actually focusing on the people. Uh, and that's what the opponents do not get. They think of the government as a business, and it's not. It's not a business. It's a public to the. It's a service to the people, uh, and therefore I urge a pro ballot. Thank you. I'm going to give you 13 reasons why we're already winning this round. So first, let's address this so social anger point. Is it really worth all the debt and all the money that we're stealing from these taxpayers? Is it worth the tens of millions of dollars? The average 248 million dollars we spend per stadium. And my second response is sh um, should. They talk about civic pride, right? So people should definitely be happy when they're spending tens of millions of their dollars and building something. They should definitely be happy with the choice that they're making. But civic pride is also completely non-specific to this topic because in a con world, you would also have stadiums. You would also have teams. They would just be privately funded. I can give examples of Gillette and MetLife. Privately funded stadiums exist and are completely possible with the money. So we would still have stadiums in a con world, so we would still have civic pride. But it's it, you should be happy with how you're spending millions of your taxpayer dollars. They also talk about racial cohesion, but it really divides along lines of race. We can give the example of the White Sox, where they had this park condemnation thing. And basically, the, the African Americans that were living in the South Armour Park are argued uh, in court that the condemnation uh, was racially motivated and basically they didn't care about them because of their race and they didn't care about them because they were low income and they were being ignored because they weren't rich. To respond to their second contention of growth, they talk about tax revenues in Detroit, but I'd like to point out that a lot of the supposed money, 
a lot of the supposed spin-off they're talking about is just a substitution effect taking place. It's not actually a net benefit. There's a set amount of money that people want to spend on entertainment, so they're just moving something that they would have spent elsewhere onto these stadiums. So it's actually not creating anything and it's stealing from other parts of the community. It's just moving money around. It's not creation. Now, they also talk about the spinoff and jobs created. However, we've talked about a major detriment, the major job loss, how they're laying off librarians, how they're laying off police officers, how they're laying off teachers, and all the funding for these programs is being cut back. So how can you justify all of those public programs being completely ignored to spend money on stadiums when they don't even need to be publicly subsidized and you receive all the same benefits in the con world. There's no justification for this. Um, now, they also talk about um, the benefits to the community. However, we've given all these infrastructure harms and how they're taking money from people's pensions and retirement funds. How happy are people really then? Yeah, how, are, how much are they giving back to the community when they're stealing from other parts of the budget? Now, um, I'd also like to talk about how athletes uh, basically abuse the money that's given to them. They're given ages of salaries, um, and the billionaires that own them don't care about the people. This is not about giving back back to the community and they take expensive overseas trips. We have five examples of the US um uh, uh, the U.S. Department's um, summaries for the um, budget summaries, and they talk about five specific examples of how they're sending athletes overseas for these expensive tra training programs. Now, they also talk about public service, and they talk a lot in their case about how happy the people are. How happy are these people without their public jobs, without libraries, without police officers, without firefighters? How can they justify cutting from these public programs that make people happy and then say that the people are happy? Now, they also talk a lot about democracy. However, people vote against these stadiums and their vote is completely ignored. And in many cases, not even counted until after the decision is made. So how democratic is that? Completely ignoring the voice of the people, ignoring what they truly want. And the people that do want it, they give no um, no statistics for how many people want it. They completely talk about how it's a majority, but they never tell you how many. They consistently ask us for evidence, but fail to provide their own. They are, and also, um, I like to just bring up the fact that there's extortion taking place, and that's why it's not fair and democratic. And there's been an increase by 70% in public subsidies to stadiums on average since the 1990s, but there's been absolutely no increase in benefits. So they could do it more cheaply, but it's extortion changing that. And um, lastly, they're not charities, but they're monopolies. They run more like cartels than goodwill people. And for all of those reasons, we negate and we win the round. Okay, um, so you guys talk about spinoff and job loss uh, and job creation. Yeah. So how do you address job loss? Well, what do you mean? Okay, so we talked about how in Detroit, Chicago, Miami, LA, Glendale, how they're losing all these public jobs because they want to fund stadiums instead. So you're saying that the money is taken away from like budgets of education and public stuff? Yeah, like it's that? directly taken out of that money and it's directly put back in the stadium. So they're reallocating the money. Okay, well. To that, I would just basically say a basic answer. People want stadiums, and at the end of the day, if people choose to take the money away. Well, they don't choose, but if okay. The money so librarians don't, and police officers don't matter. Stadiums matter more. But no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that we have been publicly subsidized stadiums for the past what 100 years, and at the end of the day, people still want it, and people Can still you keep. Prove to me that people want that. Do you have a stat saying the majority of people want that, or is that your public opinion? Well, I don't have to say. You can walk outside. You see Texas uh, plates, Texas license plates. People wearing Texas shirts. People. And why do they have to be publicly subsidized? What why are the they? special benefits that come off of that? Why? How can you justify all that job loss when we get the same benefits in a con world? Well, I would basically clarify that because uh, at this day and age. Uh, basically, sports organizations, if they don't have a deal with the government, they basically leave the city. So if, like, say, the Dallas Cowboys and, and the government was like, you know what, we're not going to publicly fund, uh, we're not going to publicly subsidize right, your stadium anymore, they're going to leave and they're going to go to a city. I'm saying if public subsidies yeah, but that's, that's hypothetical. Picture. Again, like, what if... What that's if not hypothetical. That is the con world. We're arguing whether public subsidies have benefits or harms. In a con world, the harms would outweigh, and we we're saying basically there would be all private funding. It's possible. We talked about Gillette and MetLife. It's completely possible. And then you bring up MetLife, which is the most environmentally friendly stadium in the entire country. So what are these special benefits coming off this, and how can you justify this major job loss? Why would basically, basically, your answer is that you don't care and stadiums are good. Tell me how you justify that job loss. How can you say that there's job creation? There's a net harm here. But basically, at the end of the day, there is uh, economic revenue and there is an, uh, overall more jobs being created than being lost. You okay. are basically creating more jobs than the jobs are you So your jobs don't matter. Do you have a question? Uh, sure. You talk about how people don't want it and how 
we say that people do want it? Do you have any actual evidence that says people do not right. want it? Right. Okay, so I gave the two examples of the extortion. Basically what happens is that in these two cases, the people voted against it. Where? We talked about the White Sox and the other one was just a general trend. I can okay. pull up more evidence that, in your part time okay. if you'd like. But basically what happens is that you don't want to be the government official that says, hey guys, yeah, I let the Cowboys leave. You want to be the one that says, yeah, we rescued the team. We kept them. You know, it's good to save their face. And they don't care about the people. They care about what getting reelected, right? So they want to keep the team. And then to do that, the team can say, hey, I'm going to go to Florida and you don't give me $100 million from your stadium. The people vote against it and the politicians say, I don't care about your vote. You're an electorate. You don't matter. Thank you. Okay. My opponents keep referring back to a hypothetical world, and my opponent calls for the comparison of a world with and a world without public subsidies. However, the links and impacts drawn from this become null and void as the resolution asks for a comparison between benefits and drawbacks, not the con conditions of one's real life situation and one hypothetical situation. As public forum is a debate in the uh, present tense, I suggest we adhere to what the topic is asking us to engage in discourse and about. Okay, so first I'd like to go over to their first contention and they said that basically that we can use the money somewhere else. Based on the wording of the resolution, the money has already been allocated to the professional athletic organizations. And we have given multiple examples on how it does benefit the community. And in our, um, in our speech, we, uh, like for our framework, we basically said one cannot answer the qu question, is it worth it, worth it, exclusively by focusing on economic data. We have to look at the communal benefits. And they have yet to show the communal disadvantages. And we told you how people are happy. You could just go outside and see how people are happy. All around the room, they'll have uh, sports memorabilia. Also, they said that there are a lot of budget cuts to certain stuff. Everything experienced budget cuts from time to time. But again, the money is al already allocated to the stadiums. And also, they said there's a major loss in jobs. There may be a major loss in jobs, but there's also a major spike in jobs because the stadiums are being built. Who knows? Maybe these people didn't even have jobs before, but now they do because the stadium is there. And we gave the example of the Detroit Red Wings, and we said how it was in a crime-ridden area. And because that stadium is going to be put there, there are going to be more jobs and less crime in the area. Also, I'd like to go back to my third contention, how it should be considered a public service. It's the government's job to make the people happy, and these stadiums have been proven to make the people happy. My opponents have yet to show how they have said they gave maybe one, two examples of how a couple of cities aren't necessarily happy with the stadium. But I'd like to show that most cities are happy with their team. They are proud to have the team that they have. Also, um, I like to go to my first contention where it encourages social development and it brings people together. Thank you, and I urge you a pro ballot. So first I'm going to go back over my contentions and then say why we won. Okay, so our first contention was economic detriment, and we talked about the lack of benefits and then the exaggerated benefits. And in our second contention, we talked about imminent and gentrification, which my opponents have failed to address. Uh, we, in our third contention, we talked about less infrastructure spending. We agree that the government is not a business, but there are both social and economic harms either way. And so we win on balance. My uh, opponents also failed to address gentrification, displacement, extortion, uh, racial division, and job loss. Uh, they also kept saying how there's a lot of civic pride and how people are happy. Well, not everyone is happy in sports, and civic pride would still exist in a, a privately subsidized, privately funded um, stadium. Also, they kept talking about the Detroit uh, Red Wings. When, in our third contention, we stated, according to the San Francisco Gate 2014, Detroit officials announced their plan to slash public workers' pensions benefits, and on the same day, the billionaire owner of the Detroit Red Wings unveiled details of an approved taxpayer finance stadium for the professional hockey team. Detroit retirees now face massive cuts to their previously agreed retirement funds. At the same time, $283 million is going towards the new stadium. The budget problems in Michigan are part of a general general trend across the country so you can completely eliminate their point about the Detroit Red Wings and that is why I urge you to vote con. Would you like to ask the first question? Sure. Okay, so you keep referring back to the fact that the majority of the people want this. Can you give me any evidence that cites how many people truly want this? Okay. What percentage? I don't have solid statistics but so I would know. Opinion. No, I'd like to finish please. Okay, so if this was such a big problem and if the people of the majority of the people didn't want this, then we wouldn't continue to fund these stadiums. That's basically my warrant on that. May That's I ask you a question? That's absolutely wrong because of extortion, which I brought up three times, but Trudy has a question. Okay, so um, 
Oh wait, I just lost it. <laughs> uh, you can ask a question. Yeah. Um, okay, so you talk a lot about civic pride and happiness, and I really just want an answer as to how happy people are without the public programs or without their pensions. Well, actually, we really don't focus on happiness. We focus on the overall civic pride and the overall the, the building of a community, the results of civic pride. We focus so how on are you building a community by taking away from these public programs and laying people off and taking from their pension? Well, okay, just because there are some budget cuts to certain areas doesn't mean that we're completely getting rid of or eliminating millions of jobs. That happens everywhere. There are always some disadvantages, but in our case, we are proving that the benefits outweigh because the people are happy. If they weren't happy with the stadiums continuously being funded, then they would have stopped funding the stadiums years ago. Right, but, but obviously they didn't. You say that the, all of those benefits are tangible, but you can't provide with We never any said evidence. that all of them are yes, tangible. You said that you can quantify the civic pride or the happiness or the will of the people, and then you failed to provide any statistics. We showed that it was tangible because the com you can see, see the, the communities community. growing. That's it's basically so, a but tangible that's your focus. Personal uh, experience and opinion. That's you, no, you can literally see a community, see a community fanatics, growing. You can course. see businesses coming to the area. You can see people coming to an area because the stadium is there. Um, oh, may I have a question? Sure. Okay. Um, so, since stadiums are predominantly built in areas where low-income families live, what response do you have towards gentrification in eminent domain? Well, basically, eminent domain. I as I stated before, the people are being rightly compensated for their land, for their property. They're given a fair right, price. Right, they're given but fair market value, but the price of the houses goes up. So $10,000 house before is not the same thing as a $10,000 house afterward, right? They still receive compensation. Yeah. I'd like to ask a question. Okay, so you keep referring back to the privately funded stadiums and how they work just as well, just as good, basically. How is that unique to the public, publicly subsidizing stadiums? Or like publicly to subsidizing stadiums? Because you right, can bring because up in private this stadiums, current, which is basically a currently there are privately subsidized stadiums, Most and they have them. the what? Most of them, yes. Sorry, carry on. Right. Okay. So they exist. So they can exist, and they do have the exact same benefits. And we showed you MetLife, which is actually the most environmentally friendly, and it has the exact same benefits that the, all the other ones give. So you can't prove to me that there's anything special about the public subsidies, but we can prove that we receive the okay. same. Okay. I just like to point out that that's what we're debating. Okay. okay thank you. <laughs> For today's uh, last speech, I'll basically be going over the voters for today's round. Our first voter is framework. Framework. My partner specifically said that in order for the opposition to take the ballot, they would have to prove both the economic and community disadvantages. The uh, proposition, proposition, opposition did not actually argue that, and therefore, based on that, we take the ballot. Secondly, if you don't buy that, just look. The, reason, the voters, the main important voter of today's debate round is what public subsidies are. And public subsidies are the, the opponents keeps focusing on economic data and economic data, but public subsidies are not there to, to gain. They're not there to make a profit. They're not there, as I stated before, to make the people rich. They're there to provide a public service. I gave the example of publicly subsidizing a library. Just because it's, it costs X number of dollars, you're not getting that X number of dollars back. It's all a service for the people. It's all a service. Uh, Solar service for the community. We actually build the community. Uh, to answer their uh, contention, they talk about. Um, oh right, they talk about how there's this extortion and there's this abuse of, I guess, democracy. Uh, however, people want stadiums. People are willing to pay for stadiums. Why? Because people want sports. People want. Uh, People want to go to the games. People want to be a fanatic of something, and people want for their favorite team to be in that state. Uh, therefore, it is at this point it is necessary for it to be publicly subsidized. And also, they keep referring back to this con world. However, it's this hypothetical perfect world, whatever is happening, which shows a really such an abuse to the to the pro because they keep referring back to this perfect world and this perfect community where you know there's nothing wrong. Uh, and overall, that's uh, abusive to the to the pros. So overall, our framework and our third contention are the main voters of today's debate. Thank you. All right, Judge, I'm going to tell you why we've won today's round. So first, let me address um, social anchor theory and civic pride. Is it really worth all of the debt? Is it really worth the taxpayers' money and the loss to infrastructure? And again, shouldn't people be happy with how they spent all of this money where they're wasting all of their taxpayer dollars? My third response is that they failed to address our racial division and our White Sox example. They completely dropped it and they claim racial cohesion, but they give no examples. Now, to address their point of growth, they fail to address the substitution effect. They don't bring it up at all. And my fifth response is that they can't justify the job loss. And basically, the response was people want it. 
My sixth response is that they talk about the Detroit Red Wings. However, we gave the example of $300 million being taken from pensions to fund their stadium. My seventh response is that they don't address infrastructure harms. And my eighth is that they don't address the unfair abuse of money by players. And we gave three examples of that. And to their third point of public service, uh, my ninth response is that they don't respond to how happy people are without the jobs. Basically, they say, oh, yeah, they want these stadiums, and that's good enough. They don't give any real response to the SWAT, the K-9, the firefighters, the police, the libraries, all having budget cuts. My tenth response is that they call it a democracy, but they can't cite any examples of a fair vote. And we get three examples of politicians completely not caring about the vote and going against what the people asked for. How democratic is that? Um, my 11th response is that when we talked about extortion, again, their only response was that people want it. They couldn't give us any examples of that, so it's completely their personal opinion. My 12th response is that we've argued and proved both economic and social harms, which they keep asking for and we keep giving. We responded to civic pride, social anchors, racial cohesion, and the community as well. My 13th response is they drop our 70% by Judith Long um, in the increase of subsidies, but not in benefits. And my 14th response is that they drop our point that they're not charities, but monopolies, and they act like cartels. And through extortion, they enjoy the support of the government and not economists or people. For these reasons, we negate and we win.